and it's J-Dog, and it means it's Lace Out's Round 22 review for a cracking week of AFL football. Thank you to everybody joining us live on the chat, listening to us on your favourite podcast app, or even watching us on the YouTube. Yes, the YouTube, not that YouTube. The YouTube, the Lace Out AFL podcast YouTube channel. So, uh, response was really, really good last week. So, more and more people are getting onto us, and we love it, and we love making the content for you because it's all about footy, and it's just how you want it. Lace Out. Like I said before, I'm the host, Christopher Pepper. The co-host with the most is my superstar, my best mate, Jamie the Jado Wallace. And I'll tell you what, mate. Apparently there was a round of football on the weekend, but you wouldn't have known about it because the Matildas stole the show. Yeah. Um, well, that was my weekend anyway. That was it for my weekend. Yep. Anything else happened, I, I wasn't invested. I was just oh. invested in that and that alone. It was magnificent just to see the girl. I haven't seen a country this united. Oh, I don't know if I've ever seen a country more united than this. Soccer really? Rose. 2000 and oh yes, 2008. 2008, yeah. Yeah, I reckon to get into the World Cup. Yeah, I reckon there's a bit of merit to that one, big guy. But I think the thing is, is that with with this one, it's all about the game being in the country, in our country, and everybody just wants a piece of it. And it is just, it is awesome. I'm absolutely loving it. And fingers crossed, they they kill it on Wednesday night because this country is going to go even big. The ratings. Uh, I think it was the second biggest ratings ever since Kathy Freeman's big run. Like that's how big the ratings are, and it's going to be even bigger. And like I said, I was at, oh, we'll go into it in a moment. But I was at the G on Saturday night, and my goodness, there were roars going around the crowd. And it wasn't for the it wasn't for the the guy that was running around the boundary line trying to win a hundred dollar Nike voucher. No, no, no. It was for the the Matildas, the, the penalties, everything. It was just going berserk. It was ooh's ahs, ooh's ahs. So on the wedding night. Was I wasn't. Awesome. I wasn't at the game this weekend. No. Um, when the footy was on and the penalties were happening, yep. was that on the big screen or people watching on their KO subscriptions? Well, here's the thing, right? Everybody was watching it in the bars because they turned it off. So that they turned the game off after the regulation time had finished. Right. So for cool. about forty minutes, we had to sit there and watch all the different boring ads for sponsors and so forth, while everybody was leaving to go into all the bars. And the bars were humming. I didn't see the first probably half of the Carlton Melbourne game. I don't um, think the players did because apparently, if you have a look at quarter time score, <laughs> no one turned up for the first quarter of that game. Oh, really? And okay. just the rules. I can tell you now Carlton and Melbourne supporters, like, like we've said a little bit earlier on, it was the Grappa versus the Grange Cup. And normally they would be punching heads with each other, but they were arm in arm through the penalties because no one could get any coverage. So I haven't, even got, I haven't even got the fry pan out yet. But if I had the fry pan out for the first time this year, I'd be fry panning the MCG because you couldn't even get reception to even watch it on your phones. They told everybody to go onto their personal devices and you couldn't even watch it. <laughs> so everybody went to the bars. And so you're sitting there and people are getting texts from their, from their wives or from their husbands telling them what's going on. You're waiting, you hear a roar for when they, when, when they scored and you hear a hoo when they scored and a hoo when there was a save. It was amazing, amazing. And apparently that they, they showed the final sort of score at uh, the end of the um, uh, for, first quarter and the crowd went nuts even though they knew the result. They didn't care. So, yeah, it was awesome. It was Pets. awesome. Yes, mate. You just got to stop being a tight ass and get yourself off the public MCG Wi-Fi. No, I couldn't even use mobile. Jump on the 5G. Sorry, sorry, J Dog. I've just bought a pool. I can't afford 5G. I can't even get 4G. <laughs> get off the MCG public network and actually just stump into your own gigabyte data a month. Yeah. Uh, I had to save my money to pay for somebody's contract who we're going to get into uh, right, yeah. in a moment. So, mate, we're going to crack in. Let's get into the footy because it was an absolute belter of a weekend. We've got all the usual. All the usual suspects are about today, so spin in the magnets. We'll go through the ladder. Have a bit of a look at that because that is like there are still 12 teams that can fit into eight spots here. It's going to be absolutely cool. It's great to have the great man, Tommy Roker, on board. Jules Julio, we haven't seen him for a couple of weeks. We've got him on board as well too, so it's great to have. Um, he's like a he's like a uh, not as good-looking version of Mike Tyson, Jules Julio. Not in, And that's to say something because he's not really in 
that much of a good yeah, I'm trying to process what that yeah, would look don't like. Process. Hey, he's a good bloke. Let's be honest. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got all, all, the, all, all the... And Fantail's going to be back. And we have got a beautiful little segment coming off from last week, which we still haven't got a name for. So if you can help us out with that, throw it in the chat or throw it in the comments of the YouTube channel. We haven't got a name for our, our brand new segment. Um, but we'll, we'll get on to it because it's going to be something that's going to be sticking with a lot of us um, and we definitely uh, know what it's all going to be about. All right, big boy, let's go and have a look at this ladder and let's go and have a look what's going to be setting up because we've got two rounds of football to go. Some people are going to be planning finals. Some people are going to be planning... Um, going to be planning end-of-season trips. Uh, but I can tell you now, there's probably everybody down to Adelaide is still in with a chance here. So... Collingwood had their win on Friday night, but geez, they made them work hard for it, Geelong. Brisbane Lions had another good win. Port Adelaide, they've set themselves apart. They're, those three are locked in for a top four spot. This is where it gets a bit interesting. There's only one team that can pinch a top four spot from Melbourne. That's Carlton. St Kilda had a great win on the weekend. Sydney had a good weekend. Western Bulldogs, well, they, they're absolutely putrid at the moment. They, they couldn't beat an egg at the moment. They, they, they're awful. <laughs> Uh, Essendon, good to see that they they continue their fine form of almost losing to not just the bottom team but the second bottom team two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. Could you imagine if they up. lost two weeks in a row? Oh. We wouldn't. Have, we would. We would have. We would have. We could have finished the podcast on a high for the season. Almost would have equaled the Matildas getting up if oh. Essendon had lost that game. <laughs> wouldn't have cared if Matildas lost. That, that would have given us enough content for about four years. Uh, GWS, yeah, a bit of a bad loss. We'll get into that. Uh, Geelong, Stiff, Adelaide. They had a, a crack at Brisbane. They, they've had some pretty good work over their away games, but they just can't seem to get the win that they need to, to stay in that top eight contention. Richmond are out of it. Fremantle, well, they've just they've just moved a step up. Gold Coast, what a tease. But some amazing news that's come out of Gold Coast today, which I'll let you know about, J-Dog. Hawthorne, another great win. They are the killers of the moment. Don't don't worry about Mr. Brightside. We're talking about Hawthorne. And then we've got Hawthorne, uh, North Melbourne and West Coast. There's 18% difference there. So, unfortunately, Harley Reid looks like he's going to go West Coast and another perfect career will be ruined. So, big guy, what do you see happening at the top of the ladder? I made the call last week that the top eight is set. Yep. <laughs> and after the final five minutes of the Western Bulldogs game, I'm not convinced that that's going to stay the way. All right. So if Western Bulldogs drop out, right, yeah. you've got Essendon, GWS, Geelong, and Adelaide. Who would you like to have in? Who would I like to have in versus who will get in? Yep. I, I would like to have – no, I'd like to have the Western Bulldogs in. I, that's it. That's it. Just let I it as want it to, is? I don't want to see Essendon in because I just don't think they've deserved it this year. No. Giants. Not after the last couple of Giants weeks. Giants would be a good one. Yeah, that'd be good, I reckon. But I feel like that's probably ahead of the curveball, and that could actually hurt them in the following couple of years if they make a finals now. You know, Cats, are, I'll, no, 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 Cats don't deserve cats, to be there, to be Cats, I just don't want to see them in the finals. I reckon Adelaide would, would give them a shake. They're not, yeah. they're, not, they're not. I reckon they'd give them a shake. But no, I, 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 To be honest, I don't think anybody outside the top five has got a chance of winning it. Adelaide is... St Kilda, don't waste your time. Out. Sydney, just making up the numbers. Western Bulldogs, they're putrid at the moment, let's be honest. Uh, when you've got Tim English kicking out a fullback, which it looks like a, you know, the baby giraffe learning how to walk. Poor that's fella. what it looked like him. Uh, that's, you, you get paid the big bucks, you've got to do the big things. Um, all right, so top five is, is really what it's going to come down to. Uh, and Melbourne play Hawthorne this week. The giant killers, could they get another scalp? I don't know. We'll find out very, very shortly, j Mm. I reckon, I reckon, I reckon. Lots of chat is going bananas at the moment. We've got either Suns get kicked for GWS to go through. Um, nobody wants to get into the eight. Oh, no, nobody wants to get into the eight. And nobody wants to drop out of the eight. Everybody is tanking. Um, so I reckon we get into um, some magnet work, j Dog. And I want to start with a bit of this today because it's okay. all going to be happy, happy Monday. Haley off, Ellingworth on. Bloody week of piss. All right, so I wanted to highlight, unfortunately, to the Chad. Uh, Chad Wingard went down with a serious Achilles injury. Now, that's not a way that you want to get injured, let alone finish your 2023. He's going to be out of the footy for 12 months. I've had an Achilles Rico, completely different to what he had. Mine was, mine was um, voluntary. His wasn't. And so 
I feel sorry for the bloke because he actually has had a pretty good six weeks of footy and he goes down with an Achilles. And if you have a look at the footage, it looked like someone's shot him from behind the grassy knoll. It, mm-hmm. it, was, not, it was not good at all, too. So all I can say is all the best to the Chad um, for, for, for your next 12 months of, of rehab because he's at that age. Will he go around again? Probably. But is he going to be back to what he was? Definitely not. Oh, look, I'm just going to say it now, Jamie, the umpiring – on Friday night, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> but when you, take a, when you take a mark on your chest in the Bay 36 snack bar and the umpire calls it actually in, there's something wrong with the game. And you can get a sheepdog handball around in the third row of Bay 46 like Jamie Cameron did and kick a goal. There's something very, very different uh, wrong with the umpire. So I'm leaving it at that. Um Paddy McCartan and Nick Nat retiring, okay, both due to career-ending injuries and will hopefully be remembered for what they did in their careers. So Paddy McCartan, at least 10 concussions this guy's had. Uh, and if you have a look at the last one, very innocuous, but it's a shame. He got himself back up. It was up, a tackle, know, wasn't out. it? No, he just he just sort of fell to the ground. Like, he was it was a tackle. It wasn't even a, a, a sling tackle. He just fell yeah, to no, the ground. Yeah, it's a tackle, yeah. Flipped his head, yeah. And I think it was against Melbourne he did it too. So it was very, very innocuous how it happened. And Nick Nat, just a chronic Achilles injury, just can't shake it. He was contracted for next year, but he's decided to pull the pin as well too. All right. Um, and the last one, uh, I'm, uh, I'm dragging Harley Reid. Oh. Yep. Because the poor bloke has to go to West Coast. And that's just a waste. <laughs> What if what if Harley Reid is not the number one pick? Whoever is number one, what a waste! <laughs> um, they should just shut up shop. Harley Reid, Victorian. Yes, he would be. That's all right. I mean, whoever is in the running in a couple of years' time after that initial contract runs up, just like Port with J H. No, no, he contract wasn't up, mate. He still had another year. Yeah, he, but he you... sucked it up. He sooked it up. Yeah, where, where, he's... where? Look at good he is now, though. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, shirt tucked in. <laughs> Spider-Man's everywhere. <laughs> Champagne showers. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of the Why North upset by, by him no, leaving. I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, I can't understand why there'd be any uh, uh, yeah, attitude towards that one. Three votes. All right, let's give some three votes. I mentioned this one a little bit earlier, the MCG. It were the roar when the Matildas won. There was goosebumps raised all around the stadium. It was just an amazing feeling, sensational to be there, something that I won't forget. Uh, Cozzy Pickett, I have to give a good one to Cozzy Pickett. Now, for everybody, all the Melbourne supporters know this. He finally took that hanger. All season he's been jumping on people's shoulders and missing it by not – Inches, feet. He hasn't gotten near one, but he finally took one on the weekend. It was an absolute corker. He'll win, he'll win mark of the year. Easy for that one. It was an absolute ripper. Now, can you just stick to kicking goals? Because that's all we need from you for the rest of the year. All right? uh, the Giant Killers, we talked about it. The Hawks. Are they the best, best, best 16th placed team in the AFL that you've seen in most recent years? Uh... No, no, you don't reckon they've been they've been pretty. Sh- I mean, sixteen speaks for what they no, have been. Sixteen is sixteen, but they are, they've knocked they've off. They've been shoddy. They've, they've been off, shoddy. They've knocked off the Bulldogs. They've knocked off Collingwood, but they're playing some pretty good footy, J Dog. They're they're playing better. Oh, than, they're probably convinced. playing better footy than four of the teams above them. Mm. As Tommy Roker says, right. the Hawks are shit house. Uh, and they got pumped by how much? We'll leave that one alone. And Port's Lightning Bolt and the Adelaide Dark Blue Crow Jumpers loved them. I want to see the blue bolt come out a little bit more. Those three bolts, J-Dog, absolutely loved it. And the last one I want to go with is um, Ben Cunnington's goal. Did you see the celebration, everybody getting around BC when he kicked his goal in his last game, smiles all around. That is what footy's all about. And Jabez Amla is joining us on the chat as well. So haven't seen him on here for a long, long time. Great to have you back. Love you uh, getting into the show. And he says, the Hawks are placed appropriately. Give them two years, they'll be flying. I think they're flying and um, really not looking forward to playing them this week. So, j Dog, that's the magnets, the votes and the drags for round 22 of the AFL. All righty. Over to you. Love it. 
Um, do you want to go through the games? Let's go through the games. Or do you want to do... Yeah, let's quickly do the games. I've got a couple other things, but we'll get to those in a minute. Let's go through the games for round 22, Friday night. Geelong versus Collingwood. Uh, I went to bed three-quarter time for this one. I thought it was completely over. And was I wrong? Geelong. Just just when you think well, that they're out, they're out. Since we're being honest, I think I sort of switched, started to, started to get a bit nervous over the remote button in that third quarter... Yep. Halfway through, and then Geelong. Yep. Geelong just do what they do. But they haven't done it all year. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, but Col- Collingwood didn't accelerate away like they've done all yep. year. By the way, just like to let you know, I, I posted a TikTok video. Yes, Lace Out has a TikTok page as well, too. And I posted a video on the Sunday saying, uh, Collingwood supporters, you were a little bit concerned. And it was their highest rating. I think it was like 3,500 views it had. Uh, a bit concerned. Moore's gone down. No day costs. Dugowie looks a little bit banged up. It feels a little bit of Melbourne Deja Vu 2022 style where they were looking a little bit shaky towards finals. And I'm not convinced with them at the moment. There's, there's something that's not what they were at the start of the year. They, have they spent all their petrol tickets too early? Have they peaked too early, J.O.? Well, I think they went they went uh, 11 wins on the yes, trot. Yep. Not bad. Yes, not bad. Premierships aren't one in August, are they? Uh, that's certainly not. Essendon stole... Victory from the jaws of defeat once again, 13-8 to 12 goals, 577, one by nine points. Nick Larky, could you imagine Nick Larky in a good team? <laughs> God. Imagine, I tell you what, Nick Larky at Melbourne right now would be just the perfect match. It would be it'd be Dexter and Greg Evans all over again. Nah, you'd waste probably. him. Um, they're just Essendon... Uh, in fact, you've already got you've already got a North Melbourne four that you've completely wasted. He, well, we've got a flag out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he now? Uh, injured. Um, but yeah, Essendon. Are, oh, they don't deserve to play finals after what they've served up in the last couple of weeks. And don't tell me because Stringer and Draper are out. That's String, Draper's been out for half the season, and Stringer hasn't done anything at all. Return to centre that package. Um, these two teams are just looking forward to twenty twenty three, and their I beats the footy trips. Gold Coast versus Sydney. Now, I picked Gold Coast for this one. I thought their last few seasons, you um, you said, oh, I said that Gold Coast would win this one because they love playing at Sydney. I think they've won their last couple down up there. Got it wrong again, J-Dog. What happened? No faith. No faith? No faith. Um, Tommy Roker said that Tuke Miller's the best tagger in the AFL. Didn't do that good of a job because they lost. He, he's definitely a something tagger. Yeah, he's, he's a... Oh, he's... He, whether, whether it's bodies or agates. He's a ball terror. He's a ball terror. He's a terror. He's uh, the Hopawate. He's a, um, the umpires gave it to the Swans by four goals. Tommy, Tommy. Can't <laughs> say that, Tom. Oh, I love him. I, love, I just love his passion where, where, for the Suns. Where are we again with these guys? I don't know. Uh, Gold Coast? No finals, no finals. Well, would you like to hear the interesting news that was pretty much spoken about. You may know this already. And people who are listening to this live or listening to the on podcast, even on YouTube. Hardwick signed for five years. Gold Coast confirmed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Will be announced next week when he gets back into the country. How many? How many cash? Here, no cash, Robbo. No cash. It will be. I'm going to put the contract out. I'm going to it'd say be ones. it'd be ones at the per season. season. One ruse was reported at one five. Yeah, I reckon the same. I reckon one seven. So you reckon, you know what that means J Dog? <laughs> Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Oh, ching, ching, bling, bling, dimmer, dimmer. And no Mrs. Harwick to take any of that. Um, it's good for the Suns. They need it. And they've got the best under-25 list going around. If they don't play finals or finish top four in the next two years, shut the joint down. They can merge with West Coast. Uh, Brisbane Lions. Oh, Adelaide. Mm, geez, Adelaide. I thought at one stage they had this, and then Brisbane just went back into their shell again. They do that quite regularly when it gets a bit point in the last quarter. Six-point win. Geez, Brisbane, outside of the Gabba, they are very susceptible. They have they have to finish second more than your mob does. 
I agree, and I was the same. I was barracking for the Crows, and I rarely do yeah. that. But I thought they had them. I thought they had them. Oh, well. I thought they had them on toast, but they didn't have them on toast. Um, and so, and, yeah, six-point win. Brisbane pretty much gives them a chance to lock in. I think everybody, everybody wants to finish first, the first, second, or fourth. No one wants to finish third because they're going to have to play the other interstate team interstate. Yeah, correct. So you want to finish I mean, fourth you guys, Collingwood? You guys can finish fourth and still be all yeah. right because you're playing Collingwood. Yeah. Yep. We don't want to be playing Collingwood in MCG first round. Oh, I wouldn't mind. There's still going to be a few out, so we'll cross that bridge. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We're still going to make. Well, you guys are going to. You guys are going to lock We're your four lock in our first. Spot in, which, well, after this weekend, after the four point loss, some people have said the game of the season. Um, I'm not too sure if that is game of the season. No, that should be one of our topics for later on. You reckon? I'm going to write that down, actually. Yeah, I'm going to write that oh, down. Okay. I've heard that a lot the last 20 years of football. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. You t- continue the show, mate. I'll just, I'll just make my own notes. You just notes make here. your own notes. Cause you, yeah. um, I'll just have my own conversation. Yeah, you, might as well. you might as well have an intelligent conversation once in a while. Uh, I will say this, go. Um... Very, very boring first quarter. Second quarter, and then picked up after half time. I will say something. Carlton are awesome to watch live. Finally. I don't give you've me come, finally. You've, 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 come, you've come to the church. There's no church here, mate. There's, there's no church here. All I'm saying is I watch them live, and they have got their good setup. And it... You've been telling me Carlton is shit, they're overrated. Oh, I've, I have said that for collapse. a long time. I have, I have said that for a long time, but I was chatting to Brad Lloyd, their football manager, before the game for about 10 minutes. Oh, excuse yourself, pick up a name. Yeah, I'll just pick up, <laughs> drop another, drop that name. You had a big chat to him for about 10 minutes before the game and just said, you know, how's everything been behind the scenes? And it's, been, it's been in a pretty good nick in when things weren't going too well in the middle of the year. There was a lot of positivity around the club and, and it's paid off in spades. But they're... Their game, their game plan is simple. In any doubt, they just go straight out the back, and then they they look for the option. and They they worked harder and they played well. And Melbourne got themselves back into it. A couple of bad possessions late in the game. Salem's miss late was. I've never seen him do that like that bad. Or didn't even hit it from forty two meters out. Couldn't even make the distance. Van Roy gets his legs taken out from under him, but they reckon that was a good smother attempt. It was a smother. Shut up, idiot. And. They took his legs out. And then the Petrarca you know, the hidden bullet, the, 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 the magic bullet or the magic fingertip that touched the ball. <laughs> second shooter. Oh, the second shooter. The third shooter. Peps. Yeah. It, was in the, it wasn't in the book tower. It was in Tower 6. Peps. Yep. It was touched. Shut up. It wasn't touched. The umpire called it touched. The umpire said he thinks someone touched it. He didn't actually know if he did. He went, I think someone touched it. He said... I believe it's been touched. I believe it's been. Can touched. we just can we just can we just can we check can we just check check with you? He either touched it or he didn't. So you don't go. I believed. Did. No, he said I it think did. someone touched it. It doesn't matter. They got it wrong, and the technology <laughs> shit. didn't get it wrong. Melbourne a home final. Right, next game. You um, guys have been on the end of the other side uh, on the other side of that before. When? You guys have had rubs calls go your way. Never, never. You've never had a call go your way. Not that I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, the, the Derby? Uh, the well, Derby or the one, Derby, sorry. wherever you're from? So, West Coast have had, I think, five 100-point losses this year. Yeah. Colling would have had seven in their entire history. How, you've been on this one a lot. How does Adam Simpson and anybody in that facility look at themselves in the eye and go, you know what, we're doing a good job here. I, it is only going to get worse, and that's the bad thing about it. I, I honestly think, and I know I, I chucked out a bit of crap to you on Saturday night, just a bit of bullshit, you know, I love a conspiracy theory. Yep. But there must be something that this coaching group knows that the board are shit scared about it coming out if they, if they just dump him. If I they don't dump underst- him, it's going to be about a $7 million payout there. I don't care. Do you care at this point? Is the coach the issue? The co- it starts. That's where that's where it starts with. Uh, th- th- there's a lot of things that are wrong with that joint. How do you? Have well, you yes, no. Five it years does. Ago. It does stick with the coach. How five do you? How do you hold? It's like starting COVID. 
cracking start. Oh, and then they sooked it up when they had they to go to Queensland. Up. And then from there, injury, injury, injury. Had all these old players they kept on to, and you get what you get. Jay, they didn't can recruit. Go, can I go through a couple of things? This, is, this sure. is how bad they were. They had 35 inside 50s for the game, right? Yep. Fremantle had 64. So they had 29 more and still won by 100. Mm-hmm. They, they had 14 free kicks, so they couldn't even get near the ball. And if they did, they just gave free kicks away. They had six centre clearances. Frio had 15. Like, everywhere you look, it was a debacle. They had the ball in possession 31%. I've never seen a stat that low for an entire game. Overall, Peps, I can't recall the last time I've seen a percentage at literally 50 on the dot. Melbourne weren't that bad. Melbourne were 49, I think it was. Were they? Okay. Yeah, 49. Oh, that's because you guys copped the 170 at one stage. So 170 yeah, and 100 yeah, or something. something like that. We were really bad. One, yeah, one, I think we were 48 or 49%. That's how bad we were. But this, this mob, I can't remember a team having five 100-pointers in a season. And laughing about it. Tommy, Tommy goes that they're tanking. For what? Successful. They're, 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 that's it's success. Working. It's working. <laughs> well done. No, You've got that? No. Absolutely shocking. It's so, shocking. Peps, it has to be a full... I, I know that the, there's a the contract figure there. They signed up Simo on a huge deal, five yep. years. This is why you don't sign five-year deals for coaches. No. No. We've got to keep them hungry. It's just like players. You've got to keep them hungry. Um, so, Peps, mm. if you were the chairman, CEO, whatever it is of, it of West Coast right now, what would you Pay do? Pay it out. Pay yeah, it out. You'd move on? Pay it out. Would you have done it at the end of the season or halfway through? It's two more weeks. Pay it out. At the end of the season. Don't worry about it. We're paying you out. I want to know. Because you what know what? Lack if, of if they can't have another season like that. They have to be shown to be doing something. Have Isn't to be shown performance to be doing clauses something. in contracts? I think they've got a lack of performance clause. <laughs> what? <laughs> how do you how do you, how do you write I want I want that. Who is who is his manager? I want that manager. I don't know who it is, but that's just it's just crap, J Dog. Like we've we've given West Coast a pasting all season. They won't get, and the thing is, is that they're not going to get any priority picks because five years ago they won a flag. Yeah. So that they, they can't get priority picks. That no one should get priority picks. Priority picks should be just scrapped. Full stop. Don't get them. If you shit too bad, it's an excuse. What is the fall of? I want. I, I should go back and have a look, but um. So, Flag, mm-hmm. Dom Sheed, hero, legend. Yep. And then, what, the next three years have been on the bottom? Something like that? Pretty Last much. three years? I think it's pretty much, yeah. Something like that. Check it out for you. You keep talking. You keep, yeah, right, yo. You go through the games. Go through uh, Doggies and Hawks. Oh, thanks, Peps. I just, I've got a list here. <laughs> I know where I'm going. There's one here. Doggies and Hawks. You know what? I'm not going to go through. Yeah, we'll go through Doggies and Hawks. Um, I just want to know. I want to know and be in that box for the last five minutes of Doggies versus Hawks. I want to know what Beveridge is thinking because they completely shut the bet again and then to cap it all off at the very end of the game they have English kicking in from the back line. There's a minute left, if that. And instead of just going the old torp down the middle or just bomb it down the middle he goes for a bit of a um, oh, what's that? What's that? What's those two walkers called? Burke and Wills. He Burke and Wills it around the back line. <laughs> He takes three bounces at about 15 metres and then kicks it to the wing to a two-on-one. <laughs> there was only, every, time I watch that fo- every time I watch that footage, all I can think is this. No, no sound. Oh, it's the best. Because he's like, where am I going? Where am I going? I don't know where to go. Bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> and then kicks it to a two-on-one. But, Peps, this is a serious issue for Western Boroughs because there was an issue there with these guys closing games out. And they get to a point where they don't know what they're doing. No, they they they're pretty bad. They are pretty bad. And we get we have this same conversation. I feel with it with some bulldogs, at least three to four times a season. Yeah. Where they seem like Beveridge is out of ideas or doesn't give enough guidance on the field. And beyond that, and I'm going to say the next person has completely screwed our topic yep. for, for the week between the finals end of the season. You know, topic we're going to talk about. You know, part yep. of our chit chat. Yep. yep, 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 chit chat. He screwed it. Without Bonton Pally, 
Who is the leader in that club? Libba. Yeah. Outside of Libba and Bolt, don't ask me who their next leader is. Don't know? No. Because they've got no on-field leadership. I, I, I Maybe Liam Jones from a back-line perspective, oh, from a forward-line perspective. If, if that's what's coming fruity, out of the back line, no, I and don't you've got think English kicking. I don't kicking. think they've got leaders. I don't, I don't think they've got any leaders. If you take issues. Point, issues, Western issues. Bulldogs. Well, you know your West Coast question? Yes. I do actually have the responses here. So they won Thank the flag you. in 2018. Yes. 2019. Now, I'm going at the end of the season ladder. Okay? Yes. So it's just easier to do it that way. Fifth in 2019. Mm-hmm. 2020, they ended up on fifth again. Okay, so mm-hmm. they've, they've had a good run. Yeah. 2021. Uh, yeah. They finished ninth. Just inside, yep. Right. 2022, they finished 17th. Okay. And they went from 10 wins down to two. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Ten wins down to two. So they talk about, you know, playing West Coast and the Doggies. Uh, West Coast and North is, is good for you. Imagine you mention, oh, shit, we got West Coast twice this year. <laughs> I asked from you, 10 to two. 10 to two. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's a big drop. That, Melbourne had a massive drop when they went from 2018 to 2019. That was a, that was a big drop that year. But that's but, massive. But you think about this, that is two wins in the whole year. <laughs> As a supporter, I would be fucking losing it. Yeah, but, you get, <laughs> yeah, but mate, you get used to it after a while. <laughs> <laughs> when we get to four, we don't know what to do. Double two figures is just like, it's like Haley's Comet. Oh, I, um, I reckon that would break me mentally as a supporter. Uh, two wins. You wouldn't want to watch the games. You'd just be like, I'm doing something else. You don't. You don't. You, no, you don't. You don't. Two. You don't. What's, so they've had lot, two. a lot of movies that year. They've had two seasons of two wins. Yeah. They won't get a priority pick. You can't go from 10 wins and then go 2-2 two, two and that's it. No. I've uh, got to talk to you about St Kilda and Richmond. St Kilda oh. get the biscuits over the over Richmond. Surprising? Not surprising? Where are you with this one? Mm, I'll pick St Kilda for this one. Not great timing for McWalter. Oh, I think the team's checked out towards the end of the year. You can't put the blame on him because Dimmer had the team and then gave it away because he knew he was getting a bucket load from Gold Coast. McQuarter, oh, you know what? I don't see any. They want an experienced coach. I don't know who which experienced coaches you can go for. They're not going to go for Stewie Jew. They're not going to go for Ken Hinckley because he'll get an extra two years, which I'll ask you about very, very shortly when we get into your game. They, Uzo's put his name, name making lights for it as well too and, and probably a couple of others. Josh Carr's not going to go for it as well, too, because he's going to get the Adelaide coaching job. I sorry, Port Adelaide coaching after Ken goes. So unless they say Ken, Ken goes to Richmond, why wouldn't they? No, they and Tommy Roker's written here, uh, Mark McVeigh. Yeah, they no don't one. want a yeah. – they, they said a they want junior. an experienced coach. Mm. They, they want something. So the only person they can go for is McWalter because he's been doing it. Oh, I, I can't see anybody else. Oh, he was under, Rodney he was, Ede. He was under Dimmer. Maybe uh, Gary Ayres? Yeah. The, the, okay. Unfortunately for McWalter is, um, uh, interim coaches very rarely get turned into full-time coaches. Okay. All right. Unfortunate. All right. Fair enough. But with St. Kilda. Well done, St. Kilda. Teasing. Yeah. You're teasing your supporters. You can do yeah, that one week, and you can play like utter garbage the other weeks. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, does it? It does no, really. not make any sense. All right. Um, J Dog, did you hear me when I had the, the music going before? Did you hear it? No, going, coming no, through? it's not working. I told you it's not working for me. I just ignore it though, Pets, because I think You're it's. You're going to tell me it's not working. No, but I thought it was just me all the time. No, it usually comes through, but didn't didn't come through tonight. That's right. Anyway, talk about what, my game. Talk about your uh, game. Yeah, let's talk about your team. Your, your okay. game. All Good. right. Um, yeah, 51 point win, Port Adelaide. Great win. Great Kenny, win. Kenny signing up for another two years? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, look, I'm not, I'm not wrapped about that. But, I mean, at the same time, I'll wait until the contract's there until I can... Yeah. Uh, look, the fact, the fact that Josh Carr has withdrawn from the Richmond race is encouraging. And if that means there's a succession plan or a handover or a Ken goes to Richmond or a Ken gets one and then plus one with Carr as an assistant, 
I don't know what permutation or what combination they can put that together, but I wouldn't mind that. In terms of the game, that's the Port Adelaide that was there five, six weeks ago. I don't know what the last four weeks have been. I think injury and illness has absolutely yep. rocked the club the last three weeks. Yeah. Um, but I also think that GWS aren't as bad as what we saw as well. Yeah, exactly right. It's ridiculous, mate. It is ridiculous. Um, this coaching merry-go-round, my goodness, it is just it's, – it's a, it's a fun time extravaganza for everybody as well. Too. Yep. And for the people in the chat, saying it again, Richmond wants an experienced coach. That excludes Mark McVeigh. That excludes Adam Uze. They're still going to put their hands up, but they've Ooh, said they're Malt ideally – Anyway, let's move on. Um, all right, it? Rising Star. Hey, Rising Star for uh, round 22. Elijah Hewitt being rewarded for his first season in round 22 from West Coast. It was a tough day at the office for the young fair, the young man there. 100. Imagine getting the Rising Star in uh, 101 point defeat. Yeah, no, they just give him out uh, now. 20 disposals, 10 contested, an equal team high, four clearances and took three marks. No, oh, give him out. They're just, they're just, they're just, just trying to give him out now. They're just giving him out now. It's like participation awards. Yeah, but hey, good much. on him. Good on him. Uh, journey to the draft, our boy Jacob Grant, back to local footy last weekend because the Coats League has had been off the last couple. Kicked two goals, two for his local club. Back at the Dandy Nong Stingrays for the final two games. Needs to have a couple of blinders to get invited to the draft combine, and uh, I have faith that the big man is going to nail it. And last and not least, before we get into tonight's topic. Bags, bags, bags. We love it when the kids are bags, 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 the, the low down, J down. bench warmers, um, uh, the squirrel grip. Um, Suggestions. Come here, boys. Um, I don't know. We need we need it. For, it's a topic of the week that J Dog wanted to address. Actually, I brought this one up, but no, I'll you did. You, you, you you roll with your. You roll with it. I'll roll with it. Okay. Well, we're getting towards the end of the season, and so I thought, you know what? Every every club commentator player. It's just rolling out the cliches. So I thought J Dog, I said to J Dog today, I said, J Dog, why don't we have a cliche draft? So what we're going to do is we're going to toss the coin. Heads or tails, J Dog? Heads. Beautiful. Would you like to take the first pick or would you like to go last? What would you like to do? Um, I are we gonna are we gonna go with our our Alternates. descending? No, you alternates. just go first, I go second. You go third, I go fourth. You go All fifth, I go sixth. All right, Alrighty so you go first. So okay. the first draft pick, j Dog is going to go with his number one cliched comment in the league, and we're going to work down, and I think we're going to have around about – well, I've written I've written about 12 down. I reckon you've done something similar. So we might get 10 each. But let's just see how it goes. All right, j Dog, for the number one draft pick – what is the most used or cliched comment coming out of AFL circles now? Being in the draft, and I'm, I'm going to go with this at the start of the season, it yep. is setting PBs. Oh, no, didn't have it. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. Didn't People have, it. have a setting of PBs. Everyone is setting PBs, Peps. Yep. Everyone's setting PBs in the 3K. Everyone's setting PBs on the bench. Yep. Well, very, very similar. One that I've been hearing a hell of a lot of, and this is probably David King's favourite at the moment, is that when teams are playing well and players are doing some hard-earned work, but they're finally going to get their rewards, they're going to get, that's right, their lick of the ice cream. Oh, he loves that one. He loves a little bit of lick of the ice cream. (laughs) Love it. Love it. All All right. right. I've got another one here. Yep. And it's a classic. Yep. It's a classic that every player goes to in a post-game. Yeah. Oh, you know, we're just going to take it one week at a time. Oh, yes, I had that. I had that. That was my number one. That was my number one. Draw. That was my number one pick. That was my number one pick was was that one. Ah, buddy, freaking hate you. All right. Well, that means that if we're going to talk about that, we're talking about teams taking it one week at a time. A lot of that time they're actually doing it 
uh, within the four walls. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing it within the four walls. We're going to go. That was my number That's good four. One. Yep, that was my number four. All right. Mine is when commentators say it's been a game of two halves. Oh, well, no shit. Been doing it for over 100 years. Yep, no worries. Yeah, we know that. It's been, <laughs> we know it's been a game of two halves. Thank well, you. Well, if you want to take it one step further, j Dog, I'm going to go for my uh, pick six in the draft. Is that, uh, well, there's going to be a few of them this weekend. Next, an eight point game. <laughs> the old stubble, the old double pointer. Oh, the old double point. It's an eight point game, this one. Yep. Um, another one I've got here on mine is when commentators say this, I say it every week. Yeah. It's finals like footy out oh, here. Oh, good one. Didn't have that one at pick seven. That's not a bad one. I reckon you've got that one cheap. I reckon you've got that one very, very yeah. nicely. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with. Um, this one, yeah, I'm going to go with this one. It's um, it, it always always tends to pop up um, when somebody gets interviewed, either after a game and they've had a great win, or they, or they've been on a series of wins and they've been playing some really good football, and they're asking how they've been fitting in and, and how everything's going, and they're just saying, "I'm happy to be doing the role for my team." Oh, the role, the player. role, oh. it's. Daft. What a bloke. Fucking roll. What a legend. <laughs> what Just, a... He's that happy to play his role. Play his role. Bullshit. Could you ever could you see um could you see any of them? Uh, Any of them say that in the old days? I'm just doing my role. Fuck just off. doing my role. Mate, I kicked 16 today. How bloody good was I? <laughs> just doing your role. Just doing my role. All right. In one of in inauguration of in 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 whatever that is, pick inauguration nine, for nine, yeah. Ken Hinckley's two-year contract extension yeah. coming this way. Yeah. We've just got to work harder for longer. Oh. Thanks, Ken. Oh. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> oh, who, who would have thought? Who would have oh. thought? Oh. Well, if you're going to go your coach, I'll go my coach with Simon Goodwin. Happens every single week. I, I could script I could script his, his, his um, press conferences. His presser, yeah. Yep. And it's, it's been creeping into a few others, but it's always him at the moment, especially when things are going well and we're playing footy. Not just any footy, our brand of footy. Oh, our brand. Our brand of You've footy. Got your brand of football. Your brand of footy. Oh, kiss That's me. also a David King lover. He loves he that loves one as well. That. He loves that. What's All right, the, what do we got? Brand? Number 11. Number 11. Um, it's when it's when players yep. post-game and they're going all right, and they say to the commentator or the person interviewing them, no, we don't read the papers. Oh, Bullshit. Bullshit. You are Googling yourselves. You are reading the papers. You are getting the fluffs up. You're getting the old half chub. Dude. You're reading the papers. Mate, if you're anything like me when I was a kid, I used to cut my name out of the community news and stick it up on the fridge. <laughs> I still I, did it at the age of 37. I don't read the papers. Bullshit. Oh, I know. Oh, just gives me the shits. All right, pick number twelve. Um, I'm going. This is a bit of an oldie and a goodie. Uh, it, it is very, very cliche. More commentators don't hear it from the players, but if you hear it from the old school players, and we've got a guest guest coming on in a moment, uh, is bad kicking is bad football. <laughs> I think I say that every week. But yes, bad kicking I love is it. bad football. Bad kicking is bad football. It's All true. right. Uh, my turn? Yep, your turn. Number 13. Oh, all right. Um, they're sending a message. Ooh. What are they sending? What message are they sending? What, are they, what, are they send, what message are they sending? I don't know. I don't know. What are they sending? We're sending a message. We're going to kill you? Oh, we're going to sending a message. We're going to kick lots of goals? Uh, we're going to win? With the, the, they're just sending a message, perhaps. Oh, they're just sending a message. They're sending right. a message to the comp. <laughs> is this an email? Oh, I don't know. Maybe is it a carrier pigeon? pigeon. It's a pigeon. Carrier pigeon. <laughs> Get here, pigeon. All right, pick 14 is um, someone kicks his first goal and they've got to get around him, boys. <laughs> kicks his first goal. Get the Gatorade out. Get, the, get around them, boys. Is one that That's they throw true. around a few that they do. All right, pick 15, J-Dog. Yep, okay, Ooh, pick 15. Now, see if we can get a diamond in the last couple. Yep. All right, so this, I am sick of hearing this every week. 
Monday morning, Sunday night, whatever it is, that was the game of the season. <laughs> Every week. How many? How many have we heard already? I think yours was the game of the season, Melbourne v. Carlton. I think there was a Port Adelaide versus Melbourne game of the season. There's a Port Adelaide Collingwood game of the season. There's it's every week's a game of the uh, season. West Coast Essendon game of the season. Oh, all righty. Okay. Um, all right. I think um, – oh, geez. Now I'm looking at my list here, and I've got to try and figure out one. Mmm, mmm, mmm. All right, I think we're going to go with this one. I think I'm going to go with um, when, 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 when the team's playing all right mm-hmm. and things are going okay, we are up and about. Oh, up and about. Oh, up and about. That was pick 16. Well, I think Love we've got two, two each, and I'm really struggling with my last four draft picks. All right. I might have to tag somebody in in a moment. All right, I've got another one here. We just didn't execute on the night. Oh, you <laughs> beautiful. Nice one. Nice one. Yep. Oh, I just want to execute on the night. All right. Just didn't execute. Righty, eh? Um, I've got one that shits me. Oh, you can't say that's going to be your last one. I know. It shits me to tears. It's more of a personal grudge for me. Is it? Because oh, I've heard it so many times. Uh, all right. Ooh. Jeez. Um. Ooh, what have I left? Did I go, and I've got to ask, did I go with happy to get the four points? Uh, no, we ha- that's we a good just one. Happy to get, ooh, no, ooh, I've got that at, oh, I've got that at 18. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's happy to get the four points. Just that's happy to get the four points. Also known as... We almost fucked that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's I love what it. you say. That's what you say when you almost fucked it up. Oh, we, we're just happy to get the four points. <clears throat> oh, we don't talk about it. We're just happy to walk <laughs> off the ground today. Was that, was that a special or was that your number 19? No, that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, that was a priority pick, was it? <laughs> that was a good one. Um, I hate it when coaches go into the presser yeah. and they've had a dirty night yeah. and they just sit there and they go, look, the better team won on the night and full congratulations to them. I hate when coaches Fuck say off. that. This is not... Don't say that. Don't be woke. Don't You'd be broke. broke. Be oh. mad. Go in there and do a Ricky Stewart and just walk, <laughs> just, just walk out. Just, don't just... Just, <laughs> just be furious. Be uh, why are you standing for an election? Uh, oh, this is too hard. Well, just imagine Melbourne, like all the behind you guys kicking, you're saying, oh, the better team won. No, fuck, we were, we were way better. No, we, we, were could shit. Kick, we, we were could shit. We kick straight. We were shit. Oh, I believe Just it. say um, that. Oh, Jodo, I've got to get my last one. I've got my last one on the tip of my tongue. Um, I think your four points is a good one, though. That's a bit of a, that's a, bit of a yeah, diamond. Yeah, that a, was a bit of a, a diamond. Draft draft and, and, yeah, that one's yeah. sitting quite a, quite, a, quite a low one down. All right. I might have to go with, and I, I did want to play this one because it's more of a um, uh, more of an administrative one. But, but uh, I always say this one a fair bit, where it's uh, you got to get the off field right to get the on field. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At pick number twenty, I think I think there's there's twenty picks there in the draft as well too. Yeah. But can I go maybe one more with pick twenty one? You sure can. Well, I'm not going to go with pick twenty one. Our guest speaker. We've spoken about him a little bit so far tonight. I'm going to bring the great man in. <laughs> everybody is here to join us to say hi. How are you, big guy? Oh, thanks, coach. You put me in. Uh, well, you, well you, I asked me 15 times to put you in. I've put you in. It's like there's two minutes to go and it's... We're down by 10 goals. Yeah, pop me in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great news coming out of Gold Coast. Are you excited, Big Kev? Oh, mate. Look, all right. Inside word, Dimmer is 100%. You're on it, Peps. You, you've, got, you've got the early call. It's a, it's, it's a lay down, Mazair. Um, <laughs> he, he was the obvious pick, but, yeah, sorry to do it, you. Mate, uh, you did, you did, you, you, you copped it all. Don't be, and don't be thought, disingenuous, Tom. You were dancing on his grave from early on. 
Oh, you were sinking the boots in on, from round on. three. J-Dog, hang on. I, I've always been a supporter of with you, but you have. this year, this year, he, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just winding you up, Tom. Journey. Just winding you up. It's a tough journey. <laughs> the, the, the Suns have played how many games? Have the Suns played at home this year, Peps. Um, nine. No, eight. eight. They've got one more, and that'll be nine. Nine out of twenty-three home games. How come? Well, they played the two at Darwin, and, they, and, and the, Darwin's. Come out good for us, but mate, no other club in the whole in the whole competition has to play so many away games. We're travelling all the time. Six youngest list, and when we say six youngest list, Jesus, it, it's the team is just every week. Hey, I got a question to ask you, Tony. Come up, go down, they come up, and it's inconsistent. Dimmer is going to come in and just shape it up, and the if, if they're not going to shape up, they'll ship out, and it's going to be a different team next year. I said top four, Peps. You did. How wrong. Yeah. How wrong. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question, Tom? I'm just throwing this up, and you know, I'm hopefully hit, hit, hit the dartboard on this one, but have you been celebrating Dimmer's arrival a little bit tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Mate, it's Monday night. I don't operate <laughs> on the nine-to-five uh, <laughs> Monday to Friday, nine to five. Uh, I, I go, I go uh, Wednesday to Sunday. <laughs> so I'm tipping that's a yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I already showed you in the in the pre-game. Um, I'm not, I'm not actually drinking Queensland beer uh, because Queensland beer is bloody awful. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's that bad. You just had to get rid of more and more cans of it. Well, fellas, uh, <laughs> you guys have done a bloody brilliant job tonight. And J Dog, how great is it for you to come back and and jump in the chair on the Monday night? Oh. Crap for me, I jumped in your in. <laughs> I walked into your into your, into your open grave and <laughs> had one show, <laughs> and, then, and it was on a Tuesday night. But uh, no, fellas, you've done the most brilliant job. Love what you do. Oh, thanks. Absolutely love what you do. Thanks, Tom. And, awesome. And, and we've been doing this for three years now uh, on, in the pre-season. Yep. So thanks for jumping. Let me jump in. Um, well, when when you're bringing so, this every every season, like, you, you're too sober in the pre-seasons. I want you to even be more honest when we get to that, uh, the pre-season next year. Usually <laughs> it's like, don't drink and drive, but please drink and podcast. Please drink and podcast. <laughs> Delco Suns have got the most amazing kids coming through. It's oh, yeah, unbelievable, yeah. but we'll save that for another podcast because, perhaps, yeah, you wouldn't believe the amount of players who retire on the Gold Coast and bring their kids up through the Gold Coast Sons Academy, including a young Demons father son, Jeff White's son, three kids in the Gold Coast Sons Academy. Who's that? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Kalani White is coming through in two years. He'll be at the D's. But there's two two younger boys who are coming through after him. They'll be at the D's. There's, so there's, there's as many good Sons Academy boys coming through <laughs> as there are Father Sons boys coming through the Sons Academy. Have you, Tom, have you had a can for Tom, every one of the Father yeah, Sons? Are you, are you seeing more Sons than there actually are actually available out there? Are you seeing double? <laughs> Just because I've got my uh, reflective glasses on, it's green. That's why it's going a bit blue. Oh, so, Tom, you're a classic. Now, fellas, fellas. Yes, yes Tom. The, son, the Suns have played so many away games. Port Adelaide and Adelaide, 13 games in South Australia. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Tommy. It's always a classic, mate. Yeah, yeah. I have you on any time. Just he oh. shoots me the message on the chat. Everybody, put me in, coach, and I'll like, put you in. And we're about to wrap this bad boy up, so we're going to say hoity toity. Don't be a stranger. Don't, don't be a stranger. Be a stranger, Tom. stranger join in, everybody. Oh, if you want more, so if you want more, Tommy, put it in the comments because hey, we thought the who were the only one who could have Tommy. We want more Tommy. I would have shaved for you, Pepsi, if I'd have been prepared. 
Oh, no, I'm leaving that one right alone. All right. We'll see you soon, Mr. Roka. See you, Tom. <laughs> He's so funny. He's loose. I, um, all right. So, everybody, that was a rampaging Tommy Roka. Just decided to drop in and say hi to everybody. So, yeah, look, I said, if you, if you want to join in the show, leave a message in the chat whilst we're live. We'll get you on board, have a bit of a chat with you as well, too. Because, like I said, we do the show for everybody about you. Hey, it's that we it's a part of the show that has gone Coco Bananas, Mick Malloy style. We know it as Jamie's fantail, but it is the fantail part of the show. J Dog, fantails, for everybody who doesn't know, everybody outside of Australia, fantail is one of the greatest ever confectionery items put on this earth, and they are getting put into um, put into the grave very, very shortly. So we're just Celebrating the fantail and um, a bit of audience participation. Over to you, big yeah. boy. Yeah. All right. Fantail. Who am I time? Let me get that and I'll sit that there so I don't eat it like I did last show and almost die trying to talk. To, we had to put the subtitles on last oh, week. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I was talking like the bag of my. All right. Let's go. Oh, Peps, this is really annoying. You know when you get a fantail packet that's yeah. almost got enough for two Who Am I's? Oh, they split But the half bottom one or page. two is chopped at the bottom? Mm. It's so annoying. Anyway. Just go with it. Make the first part up. <laughs> I was born. They just like... All right. Here we go. What movie am I? Oh, fantails are getting a bit spicy. Mm. That's a bit spicy. You're mixing it up. What movie am I? Oh, for fuck's sake. Based on the seven fantasy novels by British writer J.K. Rowling and starring Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint and Emma Watson, this film series has become one of the most successful franchises in movie history. The first of the seven films released in 2001. Four different directors have worked across the seven films, including Chris Columbus, Alfonso Turon, Turon. It's a name that looks like it's pretty with the Carlton back one. Mike, Mike Newell and David Yates. Oh. When Rowling sold the film rights of the first four books to Warner Brothers, she demanded that the principal cast be kept strictly British. Oh, that's very nice. What movie am I? What movie series am I? What Just this is what movie, but yeah, you can just oh, what movie series? I mean, If you know the it's, answer it's, to that one, and if you don't... Oh. Oh. Fantas have really yeah, dropped they, the ball. Remember you used to have no clue that you had to look up an encyclopedia now? It's just... Yeah, too easy. Oh, and even the second one, Pat. Well, go the second one. Let's go a daily double for this one. We've got a bit of time. No, because it's even just a shit. Okay. I'm furious. I'm I'm livid, Peps. I'm getting red because I'm angry. All right, what movie am I? I it was just a lack of melatonin, but no, it's definitely anger. Anger right now. The first sentence gives us away, Peps. I'm furious. Well, not what the last one gave it away in the first sentence. Mm, you, you need to be... you need to just like fix up your fan tales because Tommy wants it cancelled if it doesn't. Get All out. right, what movie am I? Directed by Peter Jackson and filmed in his home country of New Zealand. God's sake. Sake. Why do they started with the... Who are these aimed at? Because I can tell you when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, these were not no, aimed we at had, people No, we had age. Sophia Loren and um, uh, Marlene Ackerman and... These used to, like, you need, to need, you need to almost pass a mentor test to pass some difficult. of these back in the day. They were difficult. This is ridiculous, Van Tiles. I can see why you're getting cancelled. No, I don't know. No one's getting challenged no, by this. They're, they're, they're dialing him in too. I'm going to continue with the, the segment, but I need to find a new confectionery that has a Who Am I quiz attached no, to it or we'll something. We'll figure something out because those Van Tiles, we might have to go to the Chico quiz. All right. Just, um, really quick, anyway. J-Dog. One week at a time before we wrap this yep. one up. Round 23, two, uh, two rounds of footy to go. Either you're planning for finals or you're planning your end-of-season trip. What are you looking at for this week? Um, uh, eyes on the fr- eyes on the prize heading into the second last round of footy. Eyes on the fries this week. Ooh, it's some, it's some cracking games. Ooh. There's some really um, good games. Obviously, Collingwood, Brisbane for me at Marvel too. I'd say at Marvel. Yep. 
So that's gonna be that's gonna be under the roof. Mm-hmm. And I reckon I reckon the Brisbane Lions are a shot at that one. The grounded marvel. No, no, yes. I think, I mean, no, I don't think so. No, mm. no, don't, don't, mm, no, don't mm, rate them. Could be tasty. Their yeah, midfield's playing pretty um, bad footy at the moment. Don't like it. Um, I'm going to go Saints and Cats. Yep. That's actually going to be a good one. Who loses that doesn't make finals, I reckon. And, as you said, the Hawks-Melbourne game, because they've been the Giants yeah, Slayers yeah, recently. Yeah, they've been the Giants Slayers, yep. And that's probably oh. it. I'm not really interested in it. There's actually one other game. game, Adelaide-Sydney. Oh, yeah. Does Sydney lose that one? They pretty much have to beat Melbourne the week after. And if Melbourne lose to Hawthorne this week, it's going to be toy- like a toiger for them to keep their top four. And also, oh, actually, even GWS. I know. Oh, no, that's, got, just, that's got proper, that's got proper finals there on There is just, abs- it's just, I love it. I love footy. You know what? Footy's the winner. Giants versus Essendon is my game of the week. Yeah, I, I'm actually looking, you know, I'm looking forward to Gold Coast Carlton. Really? I am. Could you imagine? Because if Gold Coast beat Carlton, Carlton can't make top four. Come on, Peps. Gold 